Hi guys. Welcome, welcome to the kitchen, you guys. I haven't been here for quite some time. So we're going to start tonight backwards, the same as we did with our last video, because so many people ask about pieces when they dry. So I think this was my last video. It's all dry. Um, I'm not going to resin this because it's on bamboo, but you can see my edges are really nice and straight with the tape. Tape it down really well and it's fine. It's absolutely fine. So I have a bunch of freckly spots that I hate and my plan was that I was going to build some flowers and kind of put some flowers and clay over top of it. But what I find happens for me is the pores are complicated and then when you add flowers, it just gets really, really busy, really busy. So that was that piece. It's kind of like show and tell in the kitchen of good, bad and indifferent tonight. So that's that piece all done. So here's my flowers that my intent was to put on that board. But like I said, it got too busy and I didn't really like it. So a lot of people have asked the best way to paint these clay flowers. And so far this week, I've tried almost every imaginable method. And I think it's just as easy to paint them with a paintbrush. I'm not a painter, you guys. So, that looks better like that, easier to see. Um, painting has been kind of a bit of an experience for me and I'm learning as I go, so please be kind. Um, so I painted them all yellow and then I dry brushed them all with white. So it's really hard to see, but all of these high spots are just dry brushed with a little bit of white paint. So these little pieces of wood I get from my mom who collects them from the senior center that she does woodworking at. And so, I don't know, I might just put it on a board like that, maybe put a little hole, find the balance, put a little D-ring on it. I don't really know, but it's been super fun playing with it all. So there's those flowers, completely dry. And then um, I got into clay clay as well. So here's my clay piece. It serves absolutely no purpose. It's just a fun clay piece. So this is an actual like um, like mud clay, like concrete clay. And I think I showed you my C scene. Well, my C scene didn't work very well because I didn't know what I was doing and my clay didn't hold together. So I did some research and this was nothing more than just a little practice piece for me to kind of make sure it's secure and it seems to be now that I figured out how to do it. The only issue that I have with this clay opposed to the softer clay is that it's really really heavy. Really heavy and for me that wants to just jump into these massive big pieces uh, you're going to need an engineer to hang them on the wall. So that's that piece. Like I said it's show and tell in the messy kitchen. So I've been working on flowers. I told you that. I've shown you that. So I have this little strand of flowers. These are all dry. Obviously, they're going to be painted. And again, my intention was to put them on a pour, but I, I can't seem to find a pour that really does them justice. So that was that. And then my next piece was my first attempt at Japanese cherry blossoms. So again, uh, I tried it on a couple pours, it didn't work, so I cheated, you guys. I just used a sponge and I just kind of gave it an artificial granite look. I may splash some gold up it, but I don't really know. But these are really, really fun to make. These are super fun to make. And, you know, if you can find a way to embellish your pores, perfect. And if not, well, yeah, it's just a fun little project. So again, I painted these all pale pink. And then I added some dark pink air, um, dry brushing and then some white. And I might actually put a little more white and I'm not quite sure. So that's that piece to share with you. Now, my next. You should live in my head, guys. It's like just, it's like chaos on steroids. My head is just all over everywhere. So we painted the man, the man mannequin. And I look at him and I didn't really like him. So... I threw them out in the grass yesterday, covered them with a wet towel, and I came home last night, peeled all the paint off. So now, here's my new thought for the man. I 
I'm going to, there's my next flower. I'm going to make poppies in reds and yellows because they're really quite simple to paint. They're solid colors other than the center. I'm going to make poppies and I'm going to do half of them in poppies and the other half I'm going to pour maybe just in like a black and white. I haven't really decided yet. So this is still wet. This has been built for like about 20 minutes. Um, really, really super, super easy to do, you guys. Super easy to do. So my form for this was a ice cream bowl from the dollar store. So I just rolled my dough out, I just pressed it into there, and then I made my petals. So that's it. My tools are really basic. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole bunch of fancy stuff. I don't have any fancy stuff as far as that goes. Uh, you can do all of these things with household stuff. All right, now we're gonna paint. Now that I've shared everything that I've been busy doing, we're gonna paint and we're gonna bloom. And I think we're gonna actually do a transfer bloom. So I got all my colors out already. They're a little bit, well, not different. They may be different, a little different for me. I put some reds in there today. And actually let's do a bloom transfer since I have my favorite transfer board. So we're gonna build it on here. See, you guys have done this a hundred times with me. Build it on here, and then we're gonna transfer it onto a four by 16 white ceramic tile. So my bloom puddle is just beauty tone paint right out of the can. It's quite thick, and it's gonna look exactly the same as the base until I put it on the base, because the base is leftovers from yesterday, so it has a bit of a gray hue. And we might do a couple bloom puddles and see what happens. So my first color is a permanent red violet by Atelier. And then, ooh, all these choices. Let's put some gold in between there. This is also Atelier gold. I'm not really fond of this gold. It's not really gold. It kind of comes across as like, like a yellowy gold. Conacridone Nickel Azo Gold. And then this is a new color for me. I've only used this once before. This is Atelier and it's called like Eliza Marie or something like that. If you absolutely need to know, I will find it. And a little bit of Amsterdam Golden Ochre for that bloom. And then Black Cell Mix. So my Black Cell Mix Actually, let's do both. Let's do black and gold. My cell mix has been sitting around for probably two weeks mixed up. And I noticed last night it was kind of acting a little bit peculiar. It was sort of breaking up. So that's Atelier Gold Cell Mix. So I made some new and I normally let it sit at least overnight. But this has been sitting for like a whopping 15 minutes. So let's see what we can do with that. All right, my guys. We're going to blow this out. Actually, let's give it a quick torch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's really hard to live in my head because when I'm supposed to be thinking about practical things, I my head is painting and it's sculpting and it's in the garden and it's everywhere but where it should be. i got to put my hair up. All right, here we go, the blowout. Sorry, guys. I'm choking to death. Live in the kitchen. Okay. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. So, because we're going to transfer this, um, it doesn't have to be amazing composition. It just has to be pretty. And I think we're going to make some more pretty puddles while we're doing this. Oh, <clears throat> I'm dying, you guys.
Okay, let's do some of this red. Red. And ochre. And what else? What else should we put in it? All right, well, let's stick with the clonacridone because we have it mixed. And a quick torch. And then let's do this one in white cell mix. Just so we have some variations of puddles to work with. Okay, the blowout. Okay, there's a white one. Should we do one more, you guys? So we have lots and lots of stuff to play with on the table. Let's do another one in white. Use paint. Oh, I'm not wearing gloves. Huh. Okay, let's start with ochre and the funky red color that I don't know the name of and some gold. And some purple. And let's do some black and let's do some more gold because we all like things shiny. So that was one thing I forgot to mention about my yellow flowers that I showed you. If I was going to finish them again, this time I sprayed them and I sprayed them with a satiny varnish and it's too shiny because I dusted them with piggies as well. I forgot to tell you that too. Okay, the blowout. All right, we're just going to let those sit for just a minute and kind of do their thing. I'm going to put them in the safe zone, which is a chair beside my table. And I'm going to pour our base coat out onto this tile. I'm going to put some gloves on because I know I'm going to get messy. I tried so hard to paint last night and I just, I couldn't get anything that I liked. I wasn't happy with anything and then like tonight, the sun's coming and going and makes it really, really challenging. So this is, I know it looks white, but it actually is got a just a hint of gray in it because it was leftovers from all my epic failures last night. So I'm going to, I'm just going to tip and tilt this a little bit and even it out so everybody does this differently everybody every single artist you watch will have a different strategy i personally because i'm transferring i like my base coat to be almost perfect to what i need before i add my swipe because the weight of my paint is all going to be in the swipe and so that way, my theory, which is maybe nothing more than my theory, is that I don't lose so much of my pattern. That's just my theory. And I don't even know if it's an accurate theory. All right, let's collect some of this before we begin and add it to my corners. I don't have my walls set up, so I can't get crazy spinning tonight. So we just have to kind of be gentle. Last night I used um, Atelier Blue Black, which I use quite frequently, and it was really weird too. It was all breaking up, so I kind of decided that maybe my paints have sat mixed up for maybe too long. I don't know. It all separated, which I know it didn't do when I first mixed it. 
And then that's the only difference. It certainly isn't because it's nice and sunny in Greater Victoria because it's not. Okay, quick spin. It's been like the worst spring that I can ever remember. It's just, it's been horrible. I even caved and lit my wood stove the other day. And my better judgment told me, like, you can't be lighting the wood stove. It's the end of May. And I thought, yeah, but I'm cold. All right. Let's make sure you guys are still where I put you. The transfer of these beautiful colors. We might modify you guys. We haven't done that for a while. Yesterday was Modification Monday. So Puddle 2 and 3 are almost exactly the same. So it kind of doesn't matter where I pick them up. So let's just make it all one puddle. Let's just add some fun bits. So as normal, just going to scoop it up with my dollar store putty knife. And let's go. Let's do this. Take that little fade out on the end. All right, now we're actually going to rack the fade out. We're going to take this puddle and we're going to bring it up the other way. Just like that. I'm going to scoop that up so that I try not to get paint everywhere. That's my goal. My goal is to be less messy. Not always workable for me. I don't like that blob that I spilled. But it might be fun to modify. Okay, put three little dribbles on the table, onto the board. Sorry guys, I know it's noisy and it's boring to watch, but that's just the way it is today. So let's just spin this tiny bit first see what happens Okay, well, nothing's happening, and I don't really like it, so we're going to take our puddle, scoop all this yummy goodness into one spot, add a tiny little bit of, what colors do I like? I like the red and the clonacridone together quite a bit, so let's take some of this red, and some of the clonacridone. And the white salt mix because it definitely is quite pretty with the clonacridone. And then we're going to blow this out and hope for the best. All right, let's give that a minute and then we're going to turn it around and we're going to try to get rid of this section. It's my goal. All right, let's do this. It's not quite ready, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right, I'm coming in here.
That's better. Always get rid of the little bits you don't like. You don't have to keep them. We no longer have a minimal pour though. Now we're getting into full coverage for sure. Okay, so I have a couple little spots I need to fix and I'm not sure what they are, but I don't want them in my pour. There's one. I think it's actually off of my, oh, my bottom of my pouring board, you guys. It's like a little clump of gray paint. Okay, let's try to poke it with a toothpick and grab it. Huh, or not. Another little piece there. All right, I gotta get rid of that. So we're gonna modify, so let's just pick it up and make it gone. And then let's just put my arm in the wet paint. Okay, let's give this a bit of a spin. Okay, I'm just scraping off the paint again, you guys. So, should we modify? Let's do it, let's do it. So my favorite modifying tools are super, super simple household stuff, a toothpick. And I don't like these little dots, so let's just get rid of them right now. So you're just going to take your toothpick and just go through your pore and make some little lines in any direction you want. I'm t I scraped my paint off on my dirty glove. You can use paper towel if you see fit. I'm just going to do it like that. Okay, so I don't really know where to go from here. There's lots of complicated stuff going on. So I tell you guys every time, contrasting lines are always work better. Contrasting lines are totally not necessary. You can go through lines that have no contrast whatsoever and you're still going to see, I've got to get rid of that too, you're still going to see shapes and patterns. Let's drag this messy bit right through to there. Okay, just little lines with your toothpick or your manicure implement or whatever it is you're working with. You're just adding little spots of interest and just kind of changing the piece up a tiny wee bit, you guys. Okay, so we need to break this section up. I love this and I don't really want to do anything to it, but you know I'm going to. But for sure, we need to do something with that. And we need to take out this spiky bit there. Well, maybe we don't. Okay, let's do this. So um, I think I mention this every time too. If you want to break up that heavy concentration, hold your skewer or your stick on a bigger, wider angle and you get a bigger, wider cut in it. Bringing more of your base coat to the surface. So, oh, see what I did? What a bonehead. That was my finger, you guys. Well, that was just dumb. All right, well, that's not where I wanted that or the one ahead of it. So let's just kind of try to, let's just pretend that's what I wanted to do, but it's not. Wasn't at all what I wanted to do. That's what happens. Ah, 
that is what happens, my friends. Oh, this lacing is just so pretty, but we need to get something going on for balance. So let's do it. Let's go through it. Get my big fingers out of the way. All right, so that was a toothpick. Easy. Simple household item. Okay, my next favorite one is in the sink. So let's move on to just another simple, simple implement. Uh, popsicle stick, guys. I'm just going to drop it down and pull up some of these edges together where I made that big finger boo-boo. So it's just that simple. Just pull it down, wipe it off. Try to connect the color on either side and that will create this fun little chain effect. If it doesn't quite fit, you can roll your popsicle stick back until it grabs the paint on the opposite side. Like that. Where else can we go with little chains? Well, let's drag it. Let's drag some white underneath from there. I got the shakes tonight. Okay, you can use your same popsicle stick, come back into the edges of your flower and either pick up and pull or make little lines going the opposite way. I'm kind of picking up and just gently pulling it towards the white. Again, we're just creating some interesting edges. If you don't want to drag it that way, you can just touch it down and make a little white line. All just fun little Fun little things to do with our paint. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, these little curly cues, these are the metal kebab sticks, uh, party skewers, sandwich skewers, whatever you were calling them from Amazon. Um, I never used to use these. I think I tell you guys this every time too. They were sent as a gift. And they're amazing, but they're not necessary. You can do what I used to do and just glue a bead onto a kebab stick. Like everybody has a box full of Jerry Springer beads. Yep, take one off, stick it on. Okay, curly cues. Drop it down, raise it up. Not every color works the same. Um, any colors with a lot of mica powders, like any of your piggy powders, it takes a little bit of time to fiddle around with them to get them to hold their shape. So I try to create my curly cues on a tube paint. And if they don't hold the shape right now, come back. 20 minutes from now, give everything another half a twist. Once your paint starts setting up, it becomes much more versatile and it will hold its shape really, really easily. You just have to have patience and just come back. So I always go in the same direction. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. I do. Um, I don't know why. I just do. Some little ripply edges. Okay, so let's, you guys getting vertical yet? Let's break these ones up. So again, we're just touching down and lifting up and it lifts your underneath paint up. It gives your little edges kind of a little feathery edge. It's a gentle touch. You don't even have to put it down to the tile underneath. You just pick it up and be gentle. Wiping off on my hand. 
Okay, so I'm going to try to get rid of the other finger mark by doing exactly the same thing. I'm not wiping this time. These colors are so similar that it's not going to make any difference. But if you were doing like blue and white or black and white, you definitely want to wipe off. Okay, so that kind of pinched those together, made our oops moments look like we were meant to do it. Shall we just go bonkers? Let's just go crazy on this. Let's, let's just do it right up, just for fun. Since I missed Monday, I missed modification Monday because my piece was just a nightmare. Okay, what else are we gonna do, you guys? Do we need to add some more curly cues on the other side for balance? We do, okay. So this red is quite translucent, which is okay. You can see the white through it, and that's all right too. It just doesn't make quite as bold of a statement with the curly cues. Oh, that one did. All right, let's finish this off before my camera times out with another toothpick. I'm just going to give my hands a quick kind of a rough up here because the paint is drying and that's what's actually falling into my pore is paint. And we're going to get a clean toothpick. Start fresh, you guys. That was my other stunt for yesterday. I went to grab a toothpick and I've got them in just a little paper cup and I knocked them over like a thousand toothpicks all over everywhere. So I like this. It's kind of fun. I'm not, I like this collection of cells there. Um, this is kind of drab so I'd like to do something with that. And I love this. It needs something in there but I kind of don't really want to mess with it. Oh, let's just keep going. Gentle, gentle. So you can see we're just kind of picking it up and just pulling it in. Oh, I didn't do that one very well. Give it another curl right there. So the curls originally for me started, well, because I'm always messing with things, but I when I modified and I pulled in little sections, I didn't like the way the ends just came and stopped. So for me, it was about trying to figure out what I was gonna do with the end to kind of finish it. And that's where my, my little curly cue things kind of came from. And then from there, it just kind of morphs into Fun stuff to do and you can get super super detailed I've done some really really complex pieces that I haven't shared um not that I don't want to share them I just sometimes I can get myself really really lost in all these little weird embellishments and interestingly enough I put pieces into the restaurant where I sell art and I think oh that's not gonna sell you know, really nice pieces, like well done pieces. And 
I think, oh, that's not going to sell. And then I put in one of these heavily modified pieces, which really only appeals to a certain audience. And it sells. It's like, what in the name of heavens? My beautiful pieces that I thought for sure would go instantly, I bring home. The weird stuff, people like. People like weird. I think because it's maybe unique. Maybe unique is better than weird. So you can see we're getting it quite complicated now. I really want to do something in here and I just, let's go this way. Don't be afraid to change direction. Every single thing that you do just adds interest. Keeps your eye wandering all over everywhere. Like there's all these like little hidden spots. And that's really what we're doing. Creating interest. Okay, let's put one curl in the middle here. All right, my friends, that would probably be it for me. Um, this is pretty fun. Okay, I'm gonna put you on hold and then I'm gonna bring you down for a closer look. I'm gonna turn off the light on the camera so it's gonna do weird things, but I'll bring you in for a close up. Here we go. Okay, the light lock is off, so it's a little bit darker than it looks on video. Um, it's got some pretty spots. Some interesting little chains and look at this lacing. This lacing is just so, so cool. Very pretty. All right, you guys, it's bright, it's bold, it's out there. Very similar to me, bright, bold, and out there. So thank you, everybody, for hanging with me in the kitchen tonight. I haven't been here for, like I said, probably a week now, um, but I'm really happy to be here and I'm happy you're here with me. All right, guys, I'm rapidly losing the sun, so I have to go. All right, my friends, we're happy. Stay safe. We'll talk really, really soon. Oh.